Yeah, good afternoon, and thank you for the organising committee for um, allowing me to speak here today. Um, dear colleagues, uh, despite positive and, I would say, most efficacious developments in 3D recording systems, and we partake copiously of those in Baden-Württemberg, where I come from, or anyway, there are still many reasons for making and keeping simple systems available the transfer of complex survey data from total stations GPS um, into uh, easily into GIS. Yeah, for example, um, no access to 3D recording systems, at least no, no access all the time, or to hope to help coordinate and meld um, data from different systems into a common GIS system, or maybe um, 3D systems are not the method of choice on large-scale area excavations where um, GPS and total station are still the equipment of choice for accurate recording and uh, measurement of data on site. And this is especially true if this system is free. And SurveyTV is, is just such a system. This open source solution, a topographic survey, and GIS. I say survey to GIS because it was developed in Germany and we say GIS to GIS and I just can't change my habit now so I just remember survey to GIS. It's free, it's open source, published under the GNU General Public License, it's easy to learn, it's flexible and it's installable on all the main platforms. Survey to GIS process point data from, as I said, total stations, GPS, etc into fully attributed GIS objects, points, polygons, lines, etc. And there is um, a DXF export function, but our main thrust is certainly GIS. Survey to GIS exists as a standalone program. Um, during the development of Survey to GIS, this was very important for us, so that it can be used to produce process data into any desktop, GIS, or more complicated GIS of your choice. It also exists comfortably as a plug-in for the open source GIS program GVCE. And because of the shortness of time in this talk, I'm going to concentrate on this workflow, um, the rest of this uh, talk, uh, even though the um, methods in the, um, uh, that I want to show are basically appropriate to all desktop GIS um, programs. Here we see the little total station with which we start um, survey to GIS from inside GP, uh, G, uh, GV6CE. Um, survey to GIS at, uh, expects the normal sort of um, input, output, that you have the normal programs, what sort of data you want to put in, where's the output folder, what should it be called, and once we have that, we can basically put in any sort of survey data that we want. The structure of the survey data is not really very important, I'll come back to that, very yet important for the program, I'll come back to that in a moment. It just has to have a single um, set of coordinates per line and some sort of code which is meaningful uh, to us for our project. Once we've input this data, we just press our run button, so it gets runs through, and again in this workflow in GV6CE, we can set another window which allows us to add, I'm afraid you will not be able to see it very well, but add the shapes which have already been processed one or all of them to the present view, and here it says apply default survey um, <coughs> symbology to created layers. So that at the press of one or two buttons, we can already um, attribute our data with symbols which have been pre-stored in symbol libraries within the GIS. And something like this comes out, <coughs> which is simply a, a synthetic piece of survey data um, processed to shapes, just to show you the sort of um, results we're getting with the various different find symbols, excavation border, 
and various different features. I said before, it really doesn't matter what the data looks like in all that much detail. And this is due to the second important input that survey to GIS expects, and that's the so-called parser, the parser scheme. The parser is a simple piece of script with a very simple syntax which describes or maps the survey data for survey to gis so that survey to gis thing can then process it. How this works, this is a sample of a well, rather old-fashioned piece of survey data, that's the REC ELTA 500 um, survey um, format, 1970s, 1980s, originally from SAIS. Um, and here, the parser, which describes the survey data from left to right, and the parser from top to bottom. I can't go into this in too much detail now. We just have a bit of, I won't call it metadata, but a bit of initialization data um, <coughs> describing the survey data. For example, telling us that the coordinate x is coordinate x and y is y and z is z, which is very good because we want to map a surface here. Um, and a bit of um, um, topological information. Here, I just wanted to show you how survey to gis works in that we have field definitions. Each field definition from top to bottom describes the field in the survey data from left to right um, and also describes the separator between the fields, which is very important. This concept allows us two things. It allows us to format our survey data in a way which is meaningful for our project and then build a parser to map it, or on the other hand, if we get data from third parties, we can also build a parser to get it into our own system. And then we get yeah, a recognizable piece of archaeological plan. This is in fact an example from Stuttgart 21. Uh, one of the biggest, uh, I think, building sites in, in Germany at the moment, certainly in Baden-Württemberg, a controversial one as well. The German railways are bringing, building a huge underground railway station in the centre of Stuttgart. Um, you may even have heard about some of the things going on in the news here in Britain. Um, that by the by, let's just zoom into a small part of it, and you see the blue spot in the middle, which is in Baden-Württemberg, our um, symbol for pottery. And we can just see how the survey data and the um, resulting GIS data now fit together. Here we have the original piece of survey data, and here we have the so-called attribute table of the GIS. And we can recognize some things like the address number coming from the total station in the IDX field, or here the surface one, which comes in from the data. We can also recognize the finds number, which we coded in during the field. But we also see some differences. For example, we have here KE for keramic, German for ceramics. But we have in the attribute tab table that is clear text as ceramics. This we can also do with our parser. Oh, we also have it as a, just as a confirmation in the individual information to that piece of pottery. Because for each and any field that we want with our parser, we can also build thesauri into the parser, which then process <coughs> um, codes into real clear text um, every time the parser runs, the survey to GIS runs through. Oops, we see here <coughs> KE in the um, field type um, is then translated into keramic and during processing for every piece of pottery, it is then passed in, placed in. <coughs> that is basically the concept of survey to GIS. As I said, it's simple and easy to learn. We have a few um, other advanced settings or settings that I'd like to show you because survey to GIS, uh, the, develop the developers have, I would say, one, two, three, four, five decades of field um, experience. So we think and hope that quite a lot of field experience has um, gone into the conception and actual programming of survey to gis Here, something in our advanced settings, we've gone to the right advanced, you say, for example, snapping distance. 
everybody, I think, knows this situation in the field, especially if you're working in GIS systems. We've got two polygons here. It could be one pit cutting another pit, but they have a common border. But we want them both to be polygons. Um, it looks okay if you look like this, but if we sort of zoom in, you can see what actually happened, and those are the measured points, because it is physically impossible to measure the second line along the first line. You can do it afterwards in post-processing, but that's, um, then you have to know all your posts. If you do it in the first place, in the field, it may take a little longer in the field, but you save a lot of time in post-processing. We can do this with our snapping tool in survey to gis If we trust ourselves to get within five centimeters of the first line when measuring the second line, which we should be able to do, we set our snapping to five centimeters, and that is then the result we get, and those are the measured points. For example, topological um, aspects, which we can sort out already in the field. Another slide, another feature that we have for a GIS system, this is rather schematic for a GIS system, that's three polygons, one, two, and three. But for us, with a priori knowledge, it's just one <coughs> elongated pit cutting another elongated pit, so-called disjunct features. In survey to gis we can um, persuade um, survey to gis to produce um, uh, layers which produce a single feature, a single feature with uh, even though it has two parts, or if we want, we can also get it to produce two features with the same number, whichever we want. I think that version is probably the most usual but both versions are possible with our parser system. We also have in the very latest version of survey to gis we have primary filters called commands. They are here. So that we can choose if we want to have a long, complex um, piece of survey data we've been surveying all day, but we only want to process excerpts of it for some reason, we can use our primary filters for doing so. For example, here, um, another example from a, a, a present excavation on the Heuneberg, or in and around the Heuneberg in, in Germany, um, uh, Hallstatt well, um, Hallstatt time well, period well. Um, but maybe for some reason or other, we want to, we've been measuring this for many days, we just want the excavation borders now for our overarching um, GIS system. This is a very simple example. We can also combine these uh, commands, these things, but we have here Boolean um, uh, expressions. We can, on the specific field that we want to um, filter, we can just filter for Grabungsgrenze, the German word for um, excavation border, so that everything which does not um, fit to excavation border on that field will be left out whilst um, processing, and the result we then get is that the excavation border is filtered out rather than that, which is the whole piece of uh, survey data. Survey to GIS can also do sections or elevations. Those of you who know the headquarters of the Landesamt für Denkmalfeger in Esslingen will recognize the red brick style in that window there. Which I uh, measured a couple of days ago for this uh, presentation. And this is simply a cheap trick. I said before that x is x and y is y and z is z. In this case, um, z is y. We just, in our parser, in the metadata of the parser, we just trick the um, GIS into thinking that a section is a, a plane. I also said there's a CAD export. There is. It's there, and this is the CAD export of the original um, sample plan I showed you. In this case, it's rather basic, but it's there due to popular demand, I would say. And the fields of the GIS attribute table come out here as layers in the um, CAD. And none of the um, information is lost if we just click on the layer 
type, you see here that on the spots which had um, fine symbols um, in the GIS, at least the information this time without the thesaurus, the information of what those fines are is also there in the CAD. But I would like to stress that uh, survey of GIS, as in the name, the main thrust of the program, is to get data into GIS so that we can use all the analytical and filtering uh, strength of GIS. But that's where GIS kicks in. That's where survey to GIS stops and GIS kicks in. Survey to GIS is for getting, as I said, any sort of survey data into a combined GIS <coughs> system. And with that, I'd like to remind you that survey to GIS has been initiated and sponsored so far by the Landesamt für Denkmalpflege, the uh, State Office for Cultural Heritage in Baden-Württemberg, in the Baden-Württemberg, uh, southwestern state of Germany. It's published um, under general public license. It's completely free to use. Um, just a quick look at the developers of survey to gis and with a final slide of where, apart from me, you can get survey to gis Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you.